Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi everybody and welcome to today's episode as I continue to renovate the interior of this 1972 Barth motorhome that I got for free. Um, so far, the last episodes we got it running, we got it driving to a degree. Um, we gutted out some of the carpeting, I replaced the floor mats and did a little upholstery up at the front. In this episode, I'm going to try and add a splash of color to the cabinetry. Um, I have an idea of what I want to do. I, I wanted to go sort of like an avocado. Um, what I landed on is a color that's called spinach dip. <laughs> but I think it'll give this sort of a nice vintage retro sort of look. Um, while bringing a bit of uh, modern color and, and flair to what's a very brown, uh, dark den-like interior. Which is fitting, and it's of the time, but a little bit of color goes a long way. So uh, let's make things colorful on this episode. We'll get uh, prepped to get ready and we'll get painting. So uh, let's go, let's do it. First thing I have to do is remove the cupboard doors so I can access the, the wood behind it. Because what I want to do is paint the cabinets itself in that color and uh, leave a bit of the wood accent of the doors. Well, I guess you'll see, um, but these are an odd screw for whatever reason. The screw head on this is not like anything I've seen. It's like rectangular, I guess like a safety screw. But I found that if I use a very small Robertson drill bit, it takes it right out. Okay. First coat is kind of going on in certain places that probably doesn't make sense right now, but I'm hoping will make sense once it's all done. Again, I just wanted to add sort of a splash of green in here just to brighten it up a little bit. Um, I've done the first coat. Now that that's setting up and drying, I'm going to get the roller out. And uh, that can roll on a nice even coat because you can see just the, the brush. I, I just very thinly laid it on there and did the edges. Um, this wall though, I'm not sure. I feel like I'm probably going to have to do that door too to kind of balance it out. I can't just have one sploosh of green on that wall. Okay, well, to work I go. Okay, now that the green is done in that area, it's time to get the cabinets reinstalled. I can see I've got a little bit of uh, staining to do in the middle part there, but not a big deal. I'm just gonna get these hung. Luckily, they've got these little clips up there that help hold them in place while you're doing this. Find the screw hole and there we go. Okay, well, that's kind of the idea there. So that when these are all closed, See, it's just a little splash of green. It's not uh, too overwhelming. I've got some cupboards to clean up and other cupboards to shut, but I think that gives us a little bit of color in here into what was just overall very dark walnut. Um, I'm gonna get some stain on the cupboard doors, just kind of even things out, because you can see it's a little uneven there. And uh, yeah, then I'll start the cleanup process. In this area, I can hopefully get the cushions back in place. I've got some vacuuming to do. Oh boy, yeah, there's still lots to do. But I better get the vacuum over first in this area, and then we'll get the wood stain. I'm just talking my way through this as though somebody at home is listening. As I'm standing here, I'm just kind of really walking through what I'm going to do next. Uh, right. That's out of the way. Now it's time for wood stain. Well, these cushions cleaned up fairly well, actually. They're still in good shape. Oh, I gotta flip that one around. The zipper's on the wrong side. But condition is good. I think it looks good with that green. Gotta get the table back in place, flip the cushion around, and this little area is almost done. Okay, well, with that back area starting to take shape, and no, I have not fully cleaned the kitchen area yet, but I got the upholstery off the, uh, off the floor, off the ground outside, back where it needs to go there. Um, with that done, I can start to focus on this area here, which needs dismantling. 
and I need to pull all the carpet remnants from around the bottom of the table and from underneath this. And we're gonna put fresh carpet down. Um, before any of that can happen, I've gotta take this table apart and take this other seat out and I'll be able to get to, to work over here. Okay, I think I got the last screws out of this thing. Yep, easy peasy. I think I'm gonna do, maybe I'll do the same green I did down there on the lower part. That's a little worn out looking, could probably stand for an update. But more importantly, I can now get this carpet out from underneath here, um, except for that spot. Gosh, those screws are kind of stripped and they're weird screws, so that's gonna be a bit of work to get that out. but. I'll get to it in a minute. For now, I'm going to get these out and get them painted up and let them dry while I'm pulling out carpet. Okay, carpet is all cleared out. It's a little tricky getting the base of the um, table off because the screws were a little stripped. I had to use multiple types of screwdrivers to get it out, but I did. I persevered, got it out. I'm going to sweep and vacuum in here, um, reinstall the seats because I don't need to put carpet underneath those. I'm actually just going to go right up to it with the carpet. Um, so we'll get the seats installed. And I can actually start thinking about carpet pretty soon, which would be awesome. Um, as for the seats, well, the paint's just about dry. Um, by the time I finish vacuuming and cleaning in here, they should be completely dry. So that'd be great timing. I'm going to make sure there's no more nails along the edge that are left over from the carpet strips. And uh, this next step will be a, a vast improvement, I'm sure. Now I can get the seats installed, that's all gonna be covered by a seat right there. Um, but I think I'm only gonna get this one in right now because uh, that one being out gives us nice access to uh, getting the seat reinstalled when it comes back from the upholstery shop. So I don't wanna cut off our access there. I can, I can kind of get it set in place, um, but I think I can probably start laying carpet. I, I can see exactly where that uh, chair goes. So I mean, as long as I carpet, you know, a little bit over on either side, then I should be okay. So I'm going to run out to the garage and get the uh, carpet. I actually bought carpet squares. That's what I'm going to be using is carpet squares that have self-adhesive. I figured that would be a uh, inexpensive way to go. And they're supposed to be commercial grade durable. So we'll find out. I'm going to go get them and we'll give it a try. Well, to give you an idea, um, there are little glue tabs that you cut out and put on the floor which must be the world's most industrial strength glue because it looks like nothing. Apparently it holds it in place. So that goes in and then uh, you keep grabbing other chunks of carpet and you butt it up together and it kind of goes like that. So I have a uh, whole vehicle to do here. So I better find some scissors which are around here somewhere. There they are over there and start cutting these glue strips off. Well, an update, the little glue tab tape bits that they gave were kind of, well, I don't wanna say useless, but not very effective. So I resorted to old fashioned contact cement, which I know will work. Um, so I'm getting some on the floor. I gotta let it dry for about 15 minutes. Um, I'll lay these squares in that are also drying at the same time. And uh, then I'll continue on. You know, they say don't paint yourself in a corner. It's kind of what I've done, except I could step and get out of here if I wanted to right now, or I could just sit in here and enjoy the fumes. Mm, I better get out. Well, it's completely dark outside. Um, I've got most of the carpet in, but I can't work because without the, uh, well, I've lost daylight basically. Um, so I'm going to get one last piece of carpet put in over in that little spot right there. And I should be able to start reassembly pretty quick here if I can uh, get all my ducks in a row and find all the missing pieces that I need. I feel like I saw in one of these cupboards, there we go, this little chunk of wood. See, it's meant to go right there. And for whatever reason, it was up in the cupboard, probably because it broke off. So I've got a little mending to do. But uh, it does feel nice to have clean carpet and clean linoleum. And I'll be back at this in the morning to finish up. Okay, daylight, it's the next day. Kids are playing basketball behind me while I get ready to make some holes in the rubber floor mats. Um, I'm using a step drill because I find it just really handy for all sorts of stuff. 
Um, I did manage to get the carpet in last night. Feels so much better in here already. The uh, mouse smell is pretty much gone. Um, and I'm sure with a little bit more cleaning, it'd be 100% gone. So big improvements, but I need to get the seat belts in so I can get this other chair in place. Um, I think I'm gonna need new bolts. So I think Steven said they actually broke last time when he was taking them out, so we'll find out. Basically, the main priority right now is seat belts. Um, I should probably throw a little bit of fresh carpeting down in that area too, because I guess you can kind of see that when you're exactly where I am right now, but um, that's a hole for the seat belt. That's um, for the seat. I think the other hole for the other seat belt is around here somewhere. I'm going to find that and then basically put some holes in there. All right, I got the seat belts bolted back in, which means I can put the seat back together. I have to be careful though, because this, well, the reason there's tape on here is that I had to re-glue the uh, laminate strip that was on there. Anyway, that should be dry now. Um, this becomes a bed surface, so that has to fit exactly in between. So what I did is I laid the wood in there and then screwed it in place. I know it's gonna be perfect fit now. So I can actually start to reassemble things which is fantastic because uh, I'm excited to show off to my family just how good it's looking already. There we go. Both seats are in. That is done. I'm gonna start cleaning up in here a little bit, get some of the debris out of here so I can vacuum. I have that broken shelf to assemble still. Um, but it is a satisfying feeling. Oh yeah. This is the, the worst upholstery. The fabric is actually uh, chewed out on the other side. So I put it upside down like this on purpose. If anybody asking, why is the zipper facing out? It's because this is the only good side, but it's clean, it's washed, and I can sit here and kind of take in my handiwork. And honestly, it's kind of nice seeing how things are coming along. Once I get all this uh, stuff off the floor, I can start vacuuming, cleaning, washing, scrubbing, and make everything look a little better. But um, I'm gonna get some of this out of here now. Uh, cause I'm going to cut, I had this, um, floor mat in my garage. I think it'll be perfect for right there, but I've got to cut it to shape. So that's what I'm working on right now. Okay. Got the mat cut and in place. Um, now I've got to move on to this, which is the broken and damaged cupboard drawer, which should be pretty easy to figure out. These little grooves go out because that goes in the channel. So basically like putting a puzzle back together. So I'm gonna do a little dry fit and then I'll glue it together and uh, hopefully we'll have another drawer again before too long. At least I have all the parts for it. That's the important thing. Okay, got it back together. Just gonna let that glue dry. Got the pegs back in place that I had. So a little white glue will go a long way. It's actually a pretty much the main bonding ingredient with any kind of wood project. So there we go. While that sets up, I'm gonna give a vacuum and I can actually think about starting to clean the kitchen up a bit. Okay, that's where I'm at. Carpet's in. That carpet's in. I got my seats installed back where they go. And uh, I got my holes drilled out for the seats to go back through. Just need those back from the upholstery shop. Um, I need to run out and get seat bolts or seat belt bolts for this side because the ones that were on there snapped. So really actually looking not too bad in here. On the outside though, it's another story. My mom is here <laughs> and she's standing way back. She's standing way back because I started emptying out this little hatch and uh, yes, it was home to a mouse family at some point. And from what I could tell, that red carpeting is actually the original carpeting this thing came with because I found remnants of it in the kitchen. So it would have been that dark wood with that red shag. Very 70s, hey, Mom? Very, much Very so. 70s. So um, I am going to, at my mom's recommendation, I'm going to vacuum this out before I pull the carpet because I started flinging stuff all over the place and that was a little nasty. So I'm going to vacuum this up and then pull that carpet out. All right. Well, the uh, nasty carpeting is out. I guess I should pull the few extra little staples out. 
have a little bit of red on them, but that nastiness is all gone. I also mended the uh, broken stay. This was uh, the, somebody had broken one bolt off and the other had been taken out. So got those put back together enough that uh, this should be able to close up and latch again properly. And I guess while the hubcaps are here, I should get the tires all filled up with air and I can put the hubcaps back on too. All right, filled the tires up with air, got the hubcaps on, which were uh, luckily in the back. So I have all four hubcaps. Um, it's actually looking not too bad, really. I've got to paint that mirror up. It's not rusty. It's just got a little sunburnt and I guess surface rust because of it. Um, one problem I had was with this tire right here. I took the valve stem off and it just started spurting air out like crazy. So I uh, had to run out and grab a valve stem tightener tool, which uh, I had one. I don't know what I did with it. This little guy there, tightener it up. Seems all good now. Um, the, oh yeah, I've got to deal with that still. This will be a job that I won't find appealing, or maybe I will find literally appealing. I've got to peel off all that old Mac tack. Probably a heat gun and a scraper should do the job. And this cable, which I thought was run to the generator, um, is the docking power actually. So that is your power. So you can actually just plug this unit in. Um, I've got to find the keys though, because I'm very curious to have a look at this generator and see what it is. See if I can track down the keys for that thing. All right, keys feel like. Yes, right there. I don't know what does what. I'll give these a try. They look promising. First, I should test this out and see if I can actually close this up. Oh, look, there's a frying pan. <laughs> Uh, in a bag with something in it. What is that? Oh, it's like a uh, badminton net. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get this lock to turn. I'll know if I have the right keys. Oh, close. Sir. Okay, had success. And look, oh look, there's another battery in there too. That's the backup battery. We have a generator, electric plant, oil check, fill. Well, that's probably the uh, battery to start the, and then that would start it right there. Hmm. Well, it's all there. Um, doesn't look like, well, there's actually fuel in the, uh, in the float. This thing might actually go. I don't know that I'm going to attempt to start it right now though, because I've got other things I got to worry about on the vehicle. Um, mainly figuring out what's happening with the uh, gas leak I've got coming off the engine area, but it's cool that this thing has its own generator. Kind of a neat little setup really. Well, one of the easier ways to find the leak is to start it and then really have a good look and see where the fuel is coming from. Um, I don't have a seat. I have seat belts. So I've brought a lawn chair in as my temporary seat. I'm sure that's safe. I'm not going out on the road with this thing, but it is nice to have somewhere to sit. <laughs> Hopefully those seats will be back in the upholstery shop soon. Um, but let's, uh, let's get this thing started and see what's going on. Okay, I had it started and immediately I saw it was dumping fuel right from there. That would be front of the engine. Gosh. Trick is reaching the stuff under here. There's not much room to work. See if I can go at it through the cab and figure out what's happening. Well, as I'm complaining about not having space under here, I forgot that this thing has built-in power jacks, which still work. And it did get it up off the ground. Um, and I was able to determine that it, there is, in fact, a hose that runs from the fuel pump uh, up to the steel line, and that is gone. Uh, well, not gone. It's just shot. So I know what I got to do. I got to get a flathead screwdriver and take that fuel line off. Okay, before I do it, that wet line right there, that rubber hose, 
uh, connects to the fuel pump um, right to the steel line from the tank. I think I'm almost certain that's my culprit, so I'm going to take that off and replace it and see if that stops the leak. Okay, let's have a look at this thing. Yeah, look, there's a big split right there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a big crack. So that hose is going to likely be the problem. I think I've got some fuel line in the garage. Uh, hopefully the right size. I'll find out. I'll get this fixed up in a jiffy. It's nearing the end of another day. And I have to admit, the motorhome is looking really good. Now, this side uh, was actually in pretty decent shape already. The other side, though, had a spot where the um, Mac tack was peeling off. And my son, Steven, is busy working away over there getting it peeled off. How's it going? It's going good. It's, it's working, apparently. We've got a heat gun going. Somewhat working. Somewhat working. So um, we're just doing that one section. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to run out and get some paint and try and match that up as best I can. But uh, looking good. So we'll uh, check back in tomorrow and hopefully I can start painting that up. Well, Steven continues to work on getting the paint I shouldn't say paint, the Mac tack removed from the vehicle. I've actually run to the store to get paint. And I think I matched it up pretty good. This uh, matte gray from Tremclad looks identical nearly in color to the Mac tack that was on there. And by going matte, it should match the uh, the finish that that Mac tack gave us. So we'll find out, we'll see. Um, so I'm gonna go pay for this and then uh, hopefully tomorrow will be paint time. Hey, well, Steven got the uh, rest of the stickers and stuff off the side. I have brushed on the gray paint, it's a little slightly different color than the wood grain that was on there, but it's still not bad. Um, I did it in a matte finish and I brushed it intentionally because I want it to have sort of that wood grain sort of look to it. And I have a tool, a wood graining tool, which I've never tried before and I'm debating whether I should try it now, but I might, uh, to try and carry on that pattern. While I'm waiting on paint to dry, I thought I'd plug it in and see what works. So we have hood range fan, check. Water pump, yep, but I don't think there's any water in there. Holding tank, holding tank says half, water level, nothing. Panel light, check. Battery condition, good. Some of that stuff's working. Battery test, good. Water empty. Well, that stuff seems to be working. Do I have lights? I have a light there. Maybe that's an outside light. Oh, we've got a light on up here. There we go. So I have lights. Do I have air conditioning? Uh, let's see. Well, it works, but whether it blows cold is another story. Oops. Well, that light works, even though the cover just fell off. That one does too. Okay, well, so far, things are looking quite functional in Ye Olde Homestead. Furnace isn't going to do anything because it's on propane and don't have that done. Ooh! Well, it looks like the uh, gin and the gin and rum dispensers are working. Right like here, yep. Okay. Well, that's a lot of stuff that's seemingly working. Um, I don't know. Let's see. They said the fridge, well, the fridge is on and it seems like it's getting cooler. It's actually nice that it has its own separate little freezer up here too. So almost everything appears to be working. I just don't have propane to try the, uh, the stove and the other gas stuff out, but um, I bet everything else seems like it's working all right. One thing I haven't done is I have not done any cleaning in the bathroom yet. I was half expecting to find toothbrushes in there. But no such luck. I do have to mop this floor out though. So 
I'll get to that. I should get a nine volt battery and see if this uh, funky little bathroom radio works. I did not have a nine volt battery at home. So we've come to the store to grab one. And of course I had to bring Steven for a ride. We don't have many nice sunny days left to take the convertible out. So off we go to get a nine volt. Did you have a good trip? Yeah. Yeah, it is a pretty fun car, isn't it? Oh, and look, they're on sale. Well, it's working, but it only gets AM radio. But uh, I guess uh, you can't be too picky when you're on the throne. You're going to have to deal with whatever you're going to have to deal with. <laughs> you know, it dawns on me, though, that this should have a shower as well. Um, there's a drain on, on the floor. It actually isn't so bad in here since I mopped it out. But that means... I wonder if one of these cupboards, I don't know where it is, there should be like a little uh, a shower head that goes down to the sink, perhaps. Hmm. Anyway, not the end of the world if I can't find it, but uh, it's kind of cool that it has a full bathroom with the built-in shower and everything. One more thing that works, though, the working uh, porta potty radio. While I'm waiting for the seats to come back from the upholstery shop, kind of got just about everything uh, taken care of on the inside. I've decided to come outside to the front of the vehicle and uh, get the hood prop up. Uh, I've pulled off the uh, master cylinder, the brake reservoir that was on here. Um, a couple reasons why. One, the brakes were very low, kind of non-existent. They're working, but not very well. Um, I checked uh, the brakes out on the wheels. They look like they've got uh, lots of life left on them. There's no leaks throughout the lines. And what I figure it was, was the uh, booster because uh, the rubber seals on it are shot. Well, ha have a look at it. I mean, you can probably tell it looks pretty worn out and old. So I think this was my culprit right here. So I pulled it off. Um, the seals and the rubber on the inside of the cap here were pretty much uh, shriveled up and it's not gonna work or uh, draw properly if you don't have the right suction. Instead of trying to piece this thing back together, I've ordered a new one because a new um, master cylinder like this is only uh, $100 Canadian shipped. So not a big deal. That's gonna be here tomorrow. We'll get the new one in. Uh, luckily, this is a General Motors based vehicle and uh, GM still makes a whole pile of stuff. So I was able just to get one readily and uh, like I said, it'll be here in the mail tomorrow and I'll get that reinstalled and see if that makes a difference. Well, I figured since uh, I'm in this deep, I may as well put some brand new wiper blades on here. And what I'm doing is I'm just actually uh, putting the refills right in like you would. And we'll get those reattached and hopefully we'll have nice squeaky clean windshield washers on this thing. Well, it's been about two and a half weeks and a haircut later and I got the seats back from the upholstery shop. Um, we're gonna get them home and offloaded. Uh, I've got to do a little bit of care and a little bit of attention to them before I do get them mounted, but I'm optimistic that today is the day that those seats are going to go back in and I'll finally be able to uh, close the door on this project, so to speak. And there they are. I asked them to save as much of the original vinyl as they could um, so that it blended and matched with what should have been there. Um, redid the interior. Un unfortunately, this inside part, we couldn't find the exact type of fabric but I did find something that seemed age appropriate that does look very 70s to me. <laughs> uh, but I can't put these in with these bases looking like that. So I'm gonna get my sander, give them a once over, give them a fresh uh, spray of black paint and uh, let that dry before I put them in. Cause it, uh, yeah, you don't wanna go to all that work, just put some uh, rusty looking bases in. So we'll get those fixed up in a jiffy here. All right, sanded and primered. We'll just wait for that dry and then we'll get the black base down on there. And these bad boys can go back inside the barth where they belong. There we go. Almost as good as new. We're gonna let that dry. I'm trying to figure out if there's a difference between the driver's side and the passenger's side. It looks like the levers are on a different side. I honestly don't remember which side was for which. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll figure that out when I do my dry run and try and fit these things. But at least the black is done. We'll let that set and dry and then uh, get them loaded in. 
All right, I can finally say goodbye to this old lawn chair that was my driver's seat for the past couple weeks and replace it with the prop proper swivel captain's chair. Now, I've got to go get the passenger seat and uh, get these bolted in, but that's going to look so much better. And I am kind of glad that I left the original style vinyl because it matches the dashboard and everything else. You'd never know, unless you really knew, um, that this has all been redone. So off I go. I'm going to go get the other seat and we'll get those bolted in. Well, after what was a uh, long few weeks... Gosh, this thing looks big from that exact angle. <laughs> uh, I've got all the tires filled up. The seats are in it. It doesn't smell, it doesn't stink anymore. And the seats are upholstered are in. There's one thing left to do. Oh gosh, working on this thing has made it look like I stuck my finger in an electrical socket. <laughs> um, I will say, this is probably the exact type of vehicle that you're supposed to wear a skipper's hat in though. Um, it's a very cushy ride, very soft. And um, yeah, actually it seems all right. It seems like a big old motorhome. <laughs> One nice thing about this, I'll call it a bus, but this is a motorhome, is you've got these great big windows. You can really take in the nature all around you. It's, it's like being inside of a, a house, really. I guess that's the whole idea of it being called a motorhome. But for its age, for 72, this is really early for motorhomes. Uh, Barth are very collectible. Uh, there's a lot of people who really like these things. They're aluminum, they're not super heavy. Um, and they've got a really cool look to them. So, I guess we did it. We made a functioning, driving, 72 Barth motorhome. Uh, and all it cost me was some elbow grease. Uh, probably the most expensive thing was getting the uh, seats reupholstered. So, uh, total investment is probably about a few thousand bucks at this point with the tow, which was over a thousand bucks just for the tow. Which I can see what's rattling around back there. Um, and the seats uh, and some nuts and bolts and things like that. But we have a motorhome and uh, that's not bad. We also, we, I feel we saved it because it was going to be scrapped. So uh, I think a job well done. I hope you guys enjoyed this little mini series of fixing up this motorhome. Um, it is actually a lot nicer than I thought it was gonna be. You know, from the first day it showed up and I didn't know if it would run or drive or do anything to now a running, driving, functioning vehicle. And I've plugged things in, the lights work, the fridge works. Uh, I'm sure if I put propane in, in the tank, it would probably fire the furnace. So I think it's really almost good to go. Um, and you know, it's anybody's guess, um, where this has been over the last number of years. I know it's been based here in Alberta where I am, uh, but even more interesting, who's to say where it's gonna go? But guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. That was a bit of work, but uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the result. Thanks again for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you all soon, and as always, bye for now.